So welcome, thanks for joining the talk. Uh, we're going to start with a, a demo. Um, so unfortunately I couldn't attend most of the talks uh, in, in this room today, but you all I think very well know that there's lots of open source software available for IoT, like for doing like protocol stuff, for doing uh, device management, like we, we, we briefly spoke about so software upgrades and device management just before, but how do you put everything together and how do you go from blinking an LED on your Arduino kind of stuff to something more more real and more of an end-to-end -end solution. Um, what if I wear um, UPS or FedEx or like I should probably name a, a third one just to make no, not make any uh, unnecessary publicity and I want to provide my customer with a solution to to do asset tracking management, right? I have those super valuable parcels with, um, I don't know, like say this is um, Mona Lisa or this is super expensive food or um, medical equipment and the customer needs to know whether the package is traveling safely and not being dropped, not being opened, uh, temperature remains in a, in a given uh, range, etc. <laughs> so how, how do we do that? How do we get to a point where we have, at the end of the day, we have some kind of dashboard, so that might not actually be for the for the customer um, himself or herself. This is maybe more for the, the for FedEx and UPS, but we could very well imagine a similar UI or similar application for the, the end user. I want the list of my trucks, the list of parcels within each truck, and the live telemetry coming from from the parcels, right? And so apparently the room here is way uh, uh, colder, at least if, if you can say that, than the, uh, the building K where we, we are doing the same demo at the, at the Eclipse booth. But this is literally the, the, the telemetry coming from the parcel. And maybe this is something that's sensitive to light. What happens if I open up the box? Uh, no, 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 not supposed to happen. This is way, uh, way, uh, way too much. Uh, so that's basically the use case. How do we... How do we implement it, and, and, and with what with what kind of technology? So maybe let's try with um, some a couple of slides as, as as a support for the conversation. Uh, the idea really is like we, we want to track the, uh, um, the the goods and like all, all all the parcels, so that if I'm UPS or FedEx, I can optimize maybe the way that the, the trucks will, will deliver the parcels, like the ones that are more, more critical. Uh, I can pro, um, sell um, some services to, to my customers. And I mean, all in all, I'm really like generating value, but in the right way, right? I mean, maybe this means money for, for, the, for, the, for the company involved, but this means ideally like maybe a better world. Like, that's what IoT should be about. So the way it's implemented, uh, and that's some of the, the, the projects I'll be sort of name dropping in the presentation, um, is, so it's all the way with the, the, the sensors. Uh, some of you might have spotted the, the, the sensor within the box. Obviously it's not just a Lego uh, plastic box. This is a, a TI sensor tag. So like, this is really the, an off the shelf uh, Bluetooth low energy um, a beacon, if you will, that has humidity, uh, pressure, temperature, etc. sensors on it. And the goal is basically to take the, the, the telemetry from this guy all the way to the internet. So how do we, we like uh, bridge the, the gap there? First, it, it starts with a gateway. So either in the warehouse or on the trucks uh, themselves, you would find a gateway providing basically the, the, the connectivity. On one hand, the gateway that that's really what the gateway does, passing uh, some, some messages uh, from one interface to the other pretty much. On one side, that would be Bluetooth low energy, right, to, to, inter to interact with the, with the sensors. And what you want at the end of the day is send the data over, over the internet. So for that, we rely on Eclipse Cura. And I, I'll dive a bit deeper into what it is, but think about Cura as um, OpenWRT on steroids, I would say. It's basically a good old router kind of stack and like if you want to use, uh, if your board, if your device, if your gateway has Wi-Fi and a cellular modem and Ethernet, maybe you want to configure all those interfaces so that uh, maybe the, the Wi-Fi behaves as a hotspot and, and blah, blah, blah. So Cura would certainly do, do that, but also allow you to create custom applications on top of and, and deploy your, your own applications on top of. In my case, it's a very simple app slash plugin that will every five seconds or so uh, uh, discover all the, all the sensors in proximity and how, um, depending on how many packages I have for all of them, I will like grab the telemetry data and do what? Send the data to the cloud. And what's, um, what's on the cloud side? Uh, what Cura does is basically use MQTT as the protocol for the communication. One option would be 
uh, use uh, like commercial uh, IoT clouds out there. Basically, all of them support MQTT because MQTT is sort of like the, the de facto standard now, open standard for uh, all things um, M, um, IoT messaging. Or you can rely on Eclipse Kapua, which, which is basically the uh, the integrated platform for all the all the services that you basically require on um, on your um, server side, all the way from device management to storing the data to having um, a digital twin API, and we'll talk about more maybe about digital twin later on. This is all those services, so basically all the Docker containers uh, sort of that that you need that are IoT specific would be part of Kapua, and in my demo and what you've seen basically the the, the dashboard that you've seen is a simple HTML and JavaScript application that you can see the screenshot of uh, over there that talks to the uh, Kapua APIs to retrieve the list uh, of tracks, retrieve the list of uh, parcels, etc., etc. And Kapua being based on, uh, on, on, on containers and being cloud native, if you will, uh, is meant to run on things like Kubernetes, or in my particular case, this is uh, OpenShift running on Google Cloud. But it could be like literally uh, any kind of uh, variation of, uh, maybe you have the, the, all the microservices uh, spread across different data centers and you, have, um, and you want to scale up your, your data store, uh, you can easily do that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so that's kind of the, the end-to-end um, yeah, end -end solution. And it sort of illustrates that when you really care about building an, an actual end-to-end -end IoT solution, there's yeah, basically three stacks of softwares, three, uh, three major um, areas where you need to, to, to work and start building software for. One is the, 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 the devices themselves, like the, what I call the, the constraint device is really the, uh, the microcontrollers, if you will. Um, anything that's not necessarily or very likely um, not IP capable uh, kind of device, uh, which very likely will use a gateway uh, to to get the connectivity. And so, what what what's in the scope of a gateway? We'll uh, we'll talk about that in, in in just a minute. And then the cloud. The goal being, I, I briefly mentioned like, especially for, for for servers, there's lots of like IoT cloud platforms out there. Uh, very commercial, very close, very proprietary, um, as opposed to if you if you are to build an IoT solution, I would think that I mean the, the server uh, especially would need to be like if it is based on open source and based on open standards, it means that it's way easier to start thinking, oh you know what I I don't quite like MQTT for my use case. It just doesn't scale, or it's like that's not a protocol I want to use. I want to use say co-op. If you if you have a um, a um, uh, oops a server stack that's like pretty modular and even more so open source, replacing the connectivity layer, your broker by something different shouldn't be a big deal. Good luck with that on. Azure IoT or AWS IoT, and et cetera, right? And I mean, that's the whole point of, of, of basing the, the IoT on top of open source. I don't think I need to, um, uh, yeah, to convince you about that. So what do we do at Eclipse uh, around IoT? Some of you might be already using, uh, I would hope so, uh, some of the stuff coming out of Eclipse. Uh, we have 30 different open source projects, um, all the way from fairly basic building blocks, if you will, like Eclipse Paho or Eclipse Mosquito. If you guys care about uh, MQTT, you've used those clients uh, and, and server um, um, uh, pr projects uh, res respectively for doing your MQTT stuff. And we have yeah, um, a, very, a very active community that basically try and address the three stacks that, that agents mentioned. And if you look at, at the history, and this is where certainly the, the, the IoT community is headed, um, we're going from like having very small, very uh, independent building blocks like a device management stack that you would put in your embedded uh, device firmware to a, um, um, a protocol, uh, a server-side implementation of the MQTT protocol, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is really helpful. Only when you really want to build this solution, uh, like end-to-end -end solution, you don't really want to have to integrate all the bits uh, yourself. And ideally, when it comes to building the gateway, you're not pulling Paho on one end and another open source library from the other, etc. And you have some kind of integrated uh, framework, right? Uh, so for the constraint devices, I probably won't um, talk th about that um, too much, especially since in the demo I've, I've shown you, the device is really literally an off-the-shelf 
very commercial, uh, um, very, very well, I don't think it's closed actually, I think the firmware for these guys is, is, is open, but I didn't have to, to develop anything uh, specific for, for this particular device. But maybe I would like to, like if I if I want to lower the cost of of the, the of um, having m many beacons in my, in my solution, I will actually be building the firmware for my um, for my constraint devices. In which case, if there is one thing that that you need to remember, and this is uh, aligned with what we've heard in the talk just before. Um, there's, I, I guess, two things. One is the, having a good hardware abstraction layer when it comes to building your uh, your embedded application, so that. Ideally, if you start uh, like your um, your solution on I don't know an Atmel microcontroller microcontroller and you want to, to move to a Cortex more like powerful kind of device, ideally you don't have to rewrite everything. So there are some things that could help uh, from from the Eclipse community like like Eclipse Edge. And another important aspect of constrained devices, um, especially, is if you can't update, update them. Uh, like you really, you don't really own the devices because I mean we we have seen all, all the bad shit that can happen if uh, if someone gets control of the device. So there is a very good um, open standard out there for doing device management of constrained devices. It's called Lightweight M2M. You can get the reference implementations from from Eclipse and. Uh, so that's called Eclipse Wakaama, uh, and there's actually lots of um, um, cellular, uh, in particular cellular modules uh, manufacturers who already bake Lightweight M2M into the, the firmware. So like by default, they're, they're already like you can already start mani managing them from your um, from 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 server and do over the air upgrade like like we've seen just before. Gateway wise, what are we talking about? We're talking about like I said, an OpenWRT kind of stack on steroids, and what do I mean by steroids is like, we care about IoT, so not only do we want a router to provide the connectivity, we want to provide the connectivity to um, to, 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 to sensors, we want to provide uh, reliable connectivity on the shop floor if we care about industrial IoT use cases, so th this, this is one. But we also want to enable, uh, you want to enable um, either like your, your developers in, within your company or possibly your customers and your partners to develop apps on top of the gateway. So you need some kind of application container and the ability to extend the functionality of the gateway like and leveraging the fact that the gateway takes care of keeping the connectivity um, uh, up and running uh, as much as possible. You want an app that will leverage uh, some kind of Bluetooth low energy driver or even better a TI sensor tag driver that will already be part of the of the stack and, and start like using the data and just start yeah, building your your uh, your IoT um, uh, gateway application. So that's what uh, Eclipse Cura is all about. And so it's a framework that takes care takes care of the of the all the networking stuff. And it's um, uh, it's operating system agnostic, which means that you can run uh, Cura on uh, on Fedora, on Debian, even on Windows. It will always be the same way to manage uh, the Wi-Fi. It will be always be the same APIs to to, uh, uh, to configure a, a DMZ or whatever you want to do purely from a networking perspective. And then on top of that, again, very much operating system and a hardware agnostic, you can start tinkering with uh, and playing, uh, retrieving the, the, the location of, of your device through the, the standard GPS API of Eclipse Cura. You can start interacting with a Modbus um, um, industrial piece of equipment and that's really the, the, the scope of, of Eclipse Cura it, and it's being used uh, by, I mean you can run it on any kind of Linux based uh, or Windows based device or you can even get off the shelf gateways that have uh, Cura built into them and as opposed to this guy which I very likely don't want to put on the actual roof on a, of an actual truck, you can probably get like a ruggedized version of a gateway that runs the very same software uh, that I'm demonstrating here, right? <coughs> uh, so this is not a talk about like home automation, but like if you care more about a specialized distribution of a, um, a, a gateway stack for home automation, you may have heard about OpenHab or Eclipse Smart Home. So this is essentially like a targeted, um, uh, like all, all the drivers you would need to do Philips Hue and whatever else um, uh, home automation gadget you have, you can you can get from from Eclipse Smart Home. And then I'll keep the last five minutes or so of my talk to focus on maybe the, the, the area where it's, um, it matters the most to, to have um, uh, good open source uh, stuff available. This is on, on, on the cloud side of things. And so we have, again, there we have lots, lots of building blocks. 
and we're working towards an, 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 an integrated stack. Uh, one really interesting area is around uh, device management. So again, lightweight M2M is a very uh, important standard that um, um, that you should look at if you care about um, uh, device management. So Leishan is sort of the counterpart uh, server side of Eclipse Wakama, and it is based on, on Java. But uh, a really cool, a really interesting project uh, from Eclipse is Eclipse Hogbit, which is how do you, um, like say I have a thousand of those, and I need to upgrade the software, and the software is I don't know, 100 megabytes worth of like a binary, binary blob, whatever that is, and I want a solution so that um, n first I don't want to kill my network with when when my uh, thousand devices will start downloading the binaries all at the same time, and if they really do that and all update the software all at the very se same time, and I have a nasty bug and it's basically a very a buggy firmware and I'm going to break all my devices all at the same time. So Hogbit is the, the orchestrator, if you will, of software upgrade uh, rollouts and software upgrade campaigns. So how do I make it so that I only upgrade my uh, devices that are located in uh, southern France first and, if, uh, and, and let's do that over the course of seven days. If I see that there is a failure rate above uh, 2%, then I stop the upgrade campaign altogether. Right? This kind of, of functionality associated with the, the UI, the dashboard, so that you can see uh, how many percent of your fleet is running that particular version of the firmware. How do you model the dependency between all, all, the, all the software artifacts and software components? This is what Eclipse Hogbit is all about, and uh, I think that's pretty, pretty unique in the, in, the, in, the, in the open source community, so the, you might want to look at that. It provides all, all kinds of APIs for, for integrating and, and creating your own agents if, if what you want to do is uh, manage and operate uh, uh, over lightweight M2M. You could certainly do that. Maybe you want to use Hogbit to also roll out uh, new Docker containers updates at the edge that, that could certainly work as well. Um, but that's kind of like, yeah, you can certainly deploy Hogbit, deploy, um, uh, deploy Lation, deploy Eclipse Mosquito so that you have an MQTT broker. But at some point you need some integration and you need some common um, uh, notion and common knowledge of what's, what's a device in the first place. Like, I don't want to duplicate the effort of authenticating my devices when they start talking to my MQTT server authenticating them when they want to do a software upgrade, authenticating them when there is uh, a need for storing the data that they just sent. So this is what uh, Eclipse Kapua is all about. So defining all the, all the APIs, all the microservices, if you will, that are required as part of the stack. So what, what, is, um, what should be in my device registry in the first place? What, what's a device identity? What's required to uh, uniquely identify the device, to, uh, to have the, the security credentials, and have this in a very uh, like abstract way? So that's, that's Kapua. And um, so once Kapua has all those like, microservices defined, it's fairly easy to provide some kind of UI management console, management dashboard, which I could actually, um, this is a part of the demo that I should have um, shown earlier, but basically, how do I like navigate um, my fleet of devices? Uh, track three with the green light is actually that particular track here. And I could, uh, I could go, uh, if my uh, session uh, is still uh, valid, and I would hope it is, Yep, I could look at what are the, the software packages that my, um, my, my um, particular device is running. So for that, it would uh, make a query to the device registry, very likely, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I can have a look at what's in my data store. I can, um, I can configure new users with specific roles, specific ACLs, so that John um, may be able to read the telemetry information and Jane will be able to only um, manage the settings of the applications that run at the edge. So that's, that's really literally uh, what Eclipse Kapua <coughs> is all about. And what happens, what happens under, under the hood is that for all the microservices that are being defined, there might be, um, I mean the functionality might be um, an existing Eclipse building block, like maybe for the device registry underneath Eclipse Kapua, although that's not the case today, but I would hope that's what will happen. It could be implemented by means of Hogbit, or maybe this is your own existing LDAP that you want to sort of hook to the, to the particular service. For the data store, by default, um, uh, Kapua would store some of the data, uh, sort of the static metadata in the MySQL database, the, um, and the 
the telemetry will be in an Elasticsearch database. You want to replace that because you have an existing uh, InfluxDB database you want to leverage. It's fairly easy to do. And so that's, that's, that's really the, the goal of Eclipse Kapua. And it's, again, cloud native. So the goal is that you can easily deploy um, on, on, the, on the public cloud, private cloud, the hybrid cloud. It's really uh, your call. And it's really depending on your need in terms of whether you need to scale maybe the connectivity layer, because you're going to have so many devices connecting. Um, and in which case, the connectivity layer will actually be Eclipse, uh, Eclipse Hono. Uh, which is yeah, basically a generic infrastructure for taking care of um, ingesting data coming from MQTT devices, co-op devices, um, and whatnot, and make sure that you have a, 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 a consistent API so that you can consume the telemetry data without having to bother what was the initial, uh, like the protocol initially uh, being used. So that's what we do. Uh, lots of uh, lots of name dropping. I would hope that you you, you have a look at, at at the projects. There's lots of companies uh, that actually, and for me, this is sort of gold. When you have uh, like a, a company that start saying that they actually start shipping products that that are being based on on Eclipse IoT, and there's certainly a lot for, for the gateways. Like I said, you can get off-the-shelf gateways that support uh, um, like that are compatible, if you will, with Eclipse Cura server side. There's also a lot of, of common ground between um, some commercial platforms out there and, and Eclipse IoT. And we try and do, and I want to make sure to sort of, of pitch that before of, uh, to open it up for, for questions. There's a lot happening in our uh, open source community. So virtual IoT meetup, if you want to, like every other week, we have webinars. Uh, if you want to learn about what's happening in the open source IoT community at large, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's literally uh, a commercial uh, pitch free. It's really like we want to hear about open source, uh, cool open source stuff being built. So check that out. Uh, we do test beds. This is actually a test bed meant to demonstrate um, how the, the technology can be used for real, uh, real use cases. This is our website. Um, get involved. Join the mailing list. If you use the projects, come and find me after the talk. Or like, if you have an idea of a cool open source project you'd like to contribute, chances are the Eclipse IoT community could be a good place. There's already a lot happening, so it, it, might, it might make sense for you. And one, one final plug, and we'll share the results of that, of that particular survey. We've been doing that for um, three or four years. We ran a developer survey. Uh, if you wouldn't mind spending eight or 10 minutes of your time telling us what protocols you use, what programming language you care uh, the, the most about when it comes to IoT, whether you care more about uh, server-side stuff or blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is open until I think the end of next month. Uh, the, all the data sets uh, are going to be published, so it's not like we're going to make uh, money out of it or anything. It's more about understanding the trends, understanding what should be in the IoT dev room next year, uh, and, and things like that. So with that, I think that's uh, the end of my presentation. Uh, this is where to find me, and I have some time for questions. Great. Thank you. And the demo worked. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we have a few more minutes for questions. Everything was very clear. You mentioned digital twin. Right. That, that's correct. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, the question is, I the question is, I did mention digital twin, uh, although I um, yeah I, I briefly passed over uh, over that as part of the um, the presentation. My bad. Uh, the project name is Eclipse Dito. It is fairly new, but uh, the code is there and it actually actually works. Um, what's the idea behind digital twin? One thing that I have been doing here, like as part of my demo is, well, I, I want to retrieve the telemetry coming from, from, the, from the sensors. And it turns out the sensor is actually connected at this point. So like I get data. Um, one thing that, I, that a digital twin API allow you to do is basically have a digital representation of your physical asset so that it, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter whether the device is currently accessible or not. You still want somehow to know what's the latest temperature that the device has reported. Or if we're talking about a, um, an electric uh, a light bulb, the light bulb might not be uh, connected at a, very, uh, at a given time. But yet, I want to toggle the switch on, off, and have the digital twin represent what the physical state is or should be, should the device be connected. And this is the scope of like 
digital twin in general and there's lots of platforms out there who have their own sort of like way of doing digital twin and Dito is, yeah, is trying to, to do that as well. Uh, but yeah, you should check it out. There's lots of documentation already there, lots of um, demos. And this is actually a, a, a note to, to myself. I should try and integrate that as part of, of the demo to, to see what happens when I just remove the battery. Can we still do useful stuff? Yeah. You can take one more question. This one over there. Um, is there a chance to model some ownership Relation as a user, I own right. that device. Right. So, what's um, do we somehow address the um, uh, yeah, modeling the ownership of the device and ownership, therefore, of the data? I guess uh, yeah. uh, this is not. I don't think any of the Eclipse projects um, do that. Uh, we have um, an interesting initiative called Eclipse Voto, which might be like the closest thing to to to, to allowing that, and basically have yeah models to describe the capabilities of the devices. And I guess you could combine that with maybe other models, other um, descriptions of who's owning what and what's kind of the, maybe the hierarchy of the capabilities, oh, wow. hierarchy of the data, and then map that to to the roles in Kapua and, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I, yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you very much.